Hey guys, so sometimes we're stuck in the arm lock position and it's hard to break my opponent's grip because it's heavier or stronger. So I find that the smartest way to deal with that is using another submission on top of the previous one. So we'll use the double thread concept to make my opponent give me the submission instead of forcing the position. Okay, so now I'll use the wrist lock as a way to break my opponent's grip when uh, I'm stuck in the arm lock position. Okay, so this is a concept that I like to use not only when I'm stuck in the arm lock, but in other submissions as well. Okay, so if I thread, uh, if I thread uh, both the submissions, so in this case the wrist lock and the arm lock, uh, I have to, my opponent is, is um, obligated to, to defend both submissions, okay, instead of one. So if he just has to defend one, it's easier for him to, to escape or defend the submission. But he has, if he has to worry about two submissions at once, it gets pretty difficult, okay? So, in this case, my opponent gets a grip, either this, this, or, or that, doesn't matter. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'll attack the weaker part of his arm, that's the wrist. Okay, so how does the wrist lock work? I just have to bend his wrist, either to the, to the front or to the back, okay? In this case, when attacking the, um, the arm lock, it, for me it's easier to attack to the front, so bending his wrist, bending his, his hand to the, um, to the front of his arm, okay? So, to get the submission and to get the double thread working, uh, I always have to maintain the, the attack on the first submission as well, okay? So if I'm attacking the arm lock, I'm trying to break his grip, I see that my opponent has a, a good grip or he has his, his uh, arms really tight so it's hard to break the grip. If I just let go and go for the wrist, it's easier for him to defend. Okay, so when I'm going for the wrist lock as well, I have to always maintain the control of his arm. Okay, so I have to isolate the arm and control uh, throughout the position okay so I control here now I have to worry about the bend on his wrist okay so if his wrist is straighter um, it's really difficult for me to create the angle to submit okay so I always have to create some bend, some slight bend on his wrist and so then I can get the submission okay so I'm working here I'm trying to break his grip I see that uh, it's difficult so what am I gonna do I'll go under Okay, and I'll just pull the arm in this direction. So what this will do is this will create the angle that I want. Okay, so after I do this, now I can start worrying about the, the submission. Okay, so I always maintain the thread of the arm lock, so he always has to keep the grip. So as I create the angle, I will go on the back of his hand like this, palm to the back of his hand, and not letting go of the arm, I will go under and go with both hands on his wrist okay so I'll try to use this throughout the position because um, instead of just going with uh, one arm against uh, one of his, uh, one of his own arms I'll use both okay so I'll control grabbing the palm uh, grabbing the uh, palm of the uh, in the back of his hand I'll go with both hands like this and I'll threaten the submission if my opponent is not really flexible on the wrist he may tap from from this but most likely he will let go of the of his grip and try to escape from there okay so he has two options he can either defend the wrist lock or the arm lock okay to defend the wrist lock he has to straighten his arm by extending his arm I can get the arm lock okay so that's why I don't let go of the wrist as I'm laying down okay so as I go down I always maintain the thread on his wrist so he has to choose he has to choose to get submitted on his wrist or submitted on his elbow so he has a grip, so let's uh, see the first option when he's grabbing palm to palm. So I pull, I create the, the, um, the angle on his wrist, I go palm over the back of his hand, both hands. So as I go down, I'll create the, um, uh, create the double thread again, wrist lock and arm lock. If he, if he just doesn't extend his arm, I can get the tap. If he extends, okay, I can get the arm lock position from here, always maintaining uh, is the uh, thumb to the ceiling. If he has a 10 finger grip like this, it's easier for me to get the angle because uh, his hand is um, arms are a little bit wider, so it's easier for me to pull. Okay. Um, in the other option, I have to really do a, a good pull to, to create the angle. But from here, I just have to control the arm, pull it like this. So now I create the angle that I want. I can go with both hands. Same thing. I pull always threatening the wrist lock and the um, and the arm lock position okay the third option 
is when my opponent grabs both elbows. Okay, so if he does this, um, this is a little bit different because it's easier to control the arm. Okay, because he's already controlling his own arm. So if he tries to escape uh, doing the position, he, he gets slower because his arm is trapped. Okay, but how do I create the, the bend? So the first, the first part of the position I don't have to worry about because his wrist is already bent like this because for him to grab the, the elbow he can't maintain the his arm uh, like straight like this so he always have to create some bend. So what am I going to do? I'll create the arm, I will go with my hand underneath his hand like this and I'll pull. Okay, so as I pull the angle gets uh, a lot tighter so what I'm going to do is I'll trap his hand using my chest and I pull like this. So, once again, if my opponent is not that flexible, he'll tap from here. Okay. Sometimes I'm, uh, this position is really fast, so if I just do like a small pull, he taps right away. But if he doesn't and he extends the, his arms to not get submitted, so this is a way to defend the wrist lock, so he just extends his arm like this, so his hand is not trapped, so I cannot trap um, he said anymore. He's giving me the arm lock, and one uh, key aspect in in this option right here is I have to keep my hand under his hand like this. Okay, if my hand is on top of his, when he lets go, I don't have the arm to control, so he can change the grip again. So if my hand is underneath his hand, so if I feel that um, his hand is too far down, I can use my hand to push his hand a little bit up, okay, so I can have a good leverage on his, on his tricep, so I pull, and as I threaten the submission on the, on the wrist, on this hand right here, and he lets go, I always have the control of his arm, okay, so try to maintain the double threat uh, mindset throughout the position, so as I lay down, I always try to get the, the grip as tight as I can, as fast as I can, so now I have the um, I'm up from here.